Let's go. Uh, if you don't know Rachel Nealon, a quick Google will reveal that she's whew, achieved a hell of a lot. I was telling the kids about going for a ride with her uh, last night and they were mighty impressed with the list of accomplishments that I reeled out really quickly. And one of the key ones is from over 10 years ago, 2012 Worlds to be precise, where she got second silver medalist to Mariana Voss in Falkenberg, in the Netherlands. That's a brief intro. I'm sure you know the name. I'm sure you know the face. So let's see what comes from this ride. Nothing is scripted, nothing is planned. Good to see you. Good to see you, Rob. Oh. Good to see the it's a nice ride. A few little laps around Akuna and West Head. I got on the plane, it was like three degrees, and now it's like 33. Yeah, at least. Good for the system. Metabolic flexibility, all that sort of stuff. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> and you're looking, uh, you're looking very uh, uh, retired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know, it's a delicate period in this uh, this uh, life of mine. What is retirement? I don't know. What is that word? I don't know. I'm Who 53. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm carving out the trajectory at the moment, and um, I think we can uh, we can have another conversation in a few weeks' time. But yeah, I'm um, just enjoying riding my bike at the moment, and yeah, see what see what unfolds. Once a bike rider, or always a bike rider, and uh, just because right. you stop racing or for temporarily paused racing, doesn't mean you're going to stop enjoying riding a bike. Absolutely, I think once an athlete, always an athlete. So that that component of my life is never going to disappear, hundred percent. So, yeah, I'm enjoying. I started a masters this year, masters of science in coaching psychology. So pop that on top of my background in uh, in health and physio and yeah just started to dabble in some advisory with some sports and health tech companies and mm. just enjoying spreading my wings a bit <laughs> yeah no it's um it was been a really really full year and obviously launched the be bright wear a light campaign which we can talk about also in another um interview good to see you have your cool. light your rear flasher on there rob hopefully it's not flashing <laughs> Lots going on and, yeah, just stoked to be back in Australia. Yeah. Just happy to be back and connecting with my, my people, with my family especially. Just to explain, you've just gotten back from London, is that right? Uh, oh, I'm, so I'm based in Luca, like yeah. where, I live, where I've lived for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, But, yeah, just had a few trips to London in the off-season and just got off the plane, like, late last week. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And then you did you did your knee in on the flight. So you go and ride a bike <laughs> twenty thousand kilometers a year and then you do damage while sitting no. down. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a good sitter, you know. I'm really, really bad at sitting. Anyone who knows me knows that I can't sit still for more than like I'm really bad going to the movies or whatever. Uh-huh. Um so long haul flights are not my thing. So yeah, I um 
yeah, pulled up with a little bit, a little bit of a tendon, a little bit of a tendon issue, but no, all good, all good. Nothing that this physio can't can't fix. Okay. Yes. Is the short attention span ADHD formally? No, 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 no. Okay. No, not uh -huh. at all. Not short attention span. I mean, I like to just chill and rest and sleep on the long haul flights, but it's truly really very strategic how you approach this long haul travel because it's not short and it never gets shorter. <laughs> Cadell told me once uh, a bit of good advice from him, which doesn't happen terribly often, but he said uh, on a long haul flight, grab five, ba five apples and make sure you eat them once every hour or so. And then uh, life's better for your stomach when you arrive. Mm. What are the actually, tips have you got for your travel? I actually, I, I prefer to eat a salad or something in the airport before I leave. Mm. Um, I don't touch the plain food. Uh huh. Um, wear my compression socks, eye mask, earplugs, and um, and you just go into like this just just chill mode, like almost like meditative state. And I try not to have to watch too many movies or have too much stimulation, and just try to really try to sleep. Mm. And it's it's amazing. Like, um, but the key thing is, yeah, like I totally agree with Cadell. You can't just don't don't eat much on the flight. It's it's the worst thing you can do. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I asked there about ADHD. I mean, that's me. I, I'm, I'm fully been like that all my life, and I use cycling to solve it. And then um, in recent years, I've started doing a few other things, and that's been good for my mind. Yeah. Do you think cycling attracts kind of that type of person? I think solo endurance sports attract a type of person that need um, need to put their – energy in places for long periods of time and have that attention to be able to put their their energy into that physical space for long long periods of time and on, whether it's a cure or an attraction or a cure or an antidote to a, something like ADHD who knows um, but I think exercise and endurance sport is just just incredible for for any any human no matter what label you put on yourself or what quirkiness or disorder you do or, or, or mm. what point in the spectrum mm. you're on mm. exercise and especially endurance exercise whether it's walk in the bush or you know just a, a surf or a you know a, a bike ride or whatever it is mm. it's, it's awesome for any human yeah yeah, yeah yeah in in multiple in multiple dimensions but when we rode here we've only been on the bike let's say 45 minutes but it feels like you're just still like ready to go all of the time do you ever just get on the bike and poodle um, yes, mm. yes. Do you mind if we poodle on the way back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> more than happy, more than happy. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you're still, it's the competitive edge as soon as you clip in or not? No, I mean, I stick to my, I stick to my program and I stick to what my body needs and how I feel. So I don't have the urge to, you know, go hard. I think that's a, the big mistake a lot of hobby riders Mate, you've got the podge. You got the podge things going. Look at you. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's... The tufts. The podge tufts. <laughs> podge tufts. Well, look out, podge. He's got. He's he's, he's rivaling your tufts. What do you call them? I don't know. Tufts. I don't know. Tufts. I'm trying to get rid of it, but anyway, um, I think um, I think a lot of um recreational riders they go too hard on the shorter rides and sort of don't polarize their training enough. Um. But yeah, there's heaps of science in that now, and everyone's got everyone's got coaches, and everyone watches YouTube, and so you don't need to listen to me. But that's that's my personal opinion. When you when people get with their mates, they're just like racing each other, and and sometimes you just don't need to go hard. You just got to chill, have a talk, have a chat, and just let your let your endurance engine run, and not tap into your glycogen stores all the time. Mm. So, but that just depends where your fitness level is to start with. So, and anyway. what the ambition is if you're trying to. Win a bike race. That's right. Yeah, yeah it all depends on um, what goals you have. So you have to sort of mediate your training to, to what goals you have. And if your goal is to have a chat with a mate, then do that. Don't just smash him, mm. you know, because mm. it's not going to be enjoyable at the end of the day. Mm. But then if you say, yeah, let's have a smash fest, then have a smash fest. So just be intentional. That's my point. Be intentional. Ride for uh, good, not evil. Yeah. Pacing, not racing, I had to tell you last night when we organised this ride. Pacing, not racing, that's the key. That's the key. Yeah. yeah. But if you, when you want to race, just call it and say, Let's speaking go. of that, I think it's time to get it. We've got to get moving. All right. So there's uh, Rachel. Quick, uh, very, very impromptu. Very and um, 
pleasure to catch up with you. Pleasure to catch up with you too, Rob. I'm not on the timeline, but I have to go to the physio. Oh, is that the appointment? Yeah, she's actually my best friend. Rachel, I think we're in uh, paradise, would you say? Paradiso. Yeah. Paradiso. So you come back from Italy to this misery? Yeah, pretty special. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm pretty... born and bred Sydney, you know, like I absolutely love this place. And not when you're in the rat race, but you know, when you're out here, there's so many things to do in Sydney. It's just, should I be a tourist guide? Maybe totally. that, could be, that could be my retirement plan. Sydney, tu Sydney tourist, tourist guide. <laughs> Palm Beach. Central Coast, Lighthouse. Who's going on? Bird song. Water. Yeah, it's beautiful. Ripper. <laughs>